Now we'll be looking at zeros and poles and removable singularities in complex analytic functions. Okay, and we'll be solving three problems on it. Before that, please like, share, and subscribe this particular channel, and click on bell icon to get a new notification. Let us start now. Now come to zeros and poles. First, we'll be going with the definition, then examples. Okay, first we'll understand the zeros. Zeros of order n. The function of z analytic in the region R has a zeros of order n at a point z0 if and only if this is our condition given as f of z0 should be equal to f dash of z0 should be equal to f w dash of z0 should be equal to f of n minus 1 z0 should be equal to 0 okay and f n of z0 should not be equal to 0 okay to understand this one okay we'll go in with an example like f of z is equal to z minus 3 whole square now in this particular case if you consider z is equal to 3 is a 0 okay then we'll be seeing with this particular conditions whether it satisfies or not. First, find the value of f of z0. Okay, where z0 is here is nothing but 3, right? So it becomes nothing but 3 minus 3 whole square. So it becomes 0, right? Now find the value of f dash of z0, which is equal to 2 into z minus 3, right? I will be substituting z is equal to which is equal again 0. Now f double dash of n z0 which is equal to 2 which is not equal to 0 right. So we can say that z0 is equal to 3 is an 0 of order 2 right. Now we are looking at the poles of order n. Poles of order n and isolate a singular point z0 such that the function f of z can be represented by an expression in the form of f of z is equal to phi of z by z minus z not whole pi where phi of z not should not be equal to 0 then we can say that z not is called the pole of order n okay in this particular you can see that in the denominator there is in the form of z minus z not right so the z not is nothing but in a pole and n is nothing but in a order of an a pole if you consider n is equal to 1 then it becomes nothing but in a simple We'll understand with an example. If you consider f of z is equal to 3 by z minus 1 whole power 4. Now in this particular case, g of z0 is equal to 1. So we can say that z is equal to 1 is in a pole of order. If the power is 4, z order of 4. Okay. Now in zeros and poles, we'll understand about removable singularities. Okay. If you consider an analytic function f of z in the form of p of z by q of z, okay, and let a be in a poles of order n, and same times a be in a zeros of order m. If you consider example like f of z is equal to z minus a whole power m into z minus b by z minus a whole power n into z minus a. Now it is in the form of p of z by q of z, right? Now we can see that here in the numerator it is nothing but a power m so it is a zero of order m in the denominator it's a power n so it becomes nothing but a poles of order n right now basic condition you have to satisfy such that p of z is equal to z minus a whole power m into g of z now g of z should not be equal to zero okay in the numerator the extra function that comes into picture should not be equal to zero and similarly for an a q of z in the denominator z minus a whole power n into h of z and h of z should not be equal to 0 okay now in this particular case we can see that if m is less than n then we can say that it is a pole of n minus m right as we can cancel both of them so it becomes an a poles of order n minus m now if you consider m is greater than n then it becomes an a removable singularity and zero of order m minus n right now when m is greater than n then we can cancel out the poles so it becomes a nothing but removable singularities and becomes a zeros of order m minus n m minus n when you consider m is equal to n we have an removable singularities you can see that numerator and denominator part get cancelled right so it becomes a removable singularity and a is nothing but an a not a pole nor a zero in this particular case 
Now we're solving a few problems. Right? Okay, the first one f of z is cos z pi by 2. Okay, now if you find the value of f dash of z, okay, it becomes minus pi by 2 sine z pi by 2. Okay, when you substitute z is equal to 1 here, then it becomes nothing but minus pi by 2, which is not equal to 0. So z is equal to 1. It's a 0 of order 1. Now similarly if you substitute 3 here, you get the values not equal to 0. And for 5 also not equal to 0. So we will be getting it. Right. So we can see that z is equal to 1, 3 and 5. So on other zeros of order 1. Right. Now come to the next question f of z is equal to z plus 3 by z minus 1 whole square into z plus 2, right? The first term, the numerator, we get z is equal to minus 3. It is in a 0 of order 1. Come to denominator, z minus 1. We get, say that z is equal to 1. is in a pole of order 2. Now go into z plus 2. It becomes z is equal to minus 2. is in a pole of order 1. So it becomes in a simple pole. Right. Now come to next one. 2z plus 3 into z minus 1 whole square by z minus 1 into z minus 3. Right. Now comes to the first term. We get z is equal to minus 3 by 2. So it becomes in a 0 of order 1 right now come to the next one z minus 1 whole square but in a denominator also we have z minus 1 right so both of them get cancelled right we have only z minus 1 in the numerator so we can see that z is equal to 1 is in a 0 of order 1 as we have Remove the z minus 1 from the denominator. So we can say that z is equal to 1 is a, a removable singularity. Okay. Removable singularity. As we have removed the z minus 1 from the denominator. Now coming to z minus 3. We can say that z is equal to 3. It's a pole of order 1. So it becomes an a simple pole right 